Hi, welcome back to DS Tech Mirror. This video is the part 2 of the React tutorial series. And in this video, we will be saying about React components and props. For those who are new to this channel, here's a quick heads up. This channel is dedicated to deliver content related to SharePoint online customizations. Before we get started into the tutorial, please don't forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the bell icon to receive the notifications of our upcoming videos. Let's get started. Let us have a quick recap of the previous video. In the previous video, we saw about what is React, how popular the React is and how to set up React environment. If you want to quickly check out the previous video, then you can access the link on the top right corner. In this slide, we will be seeing about the structure of React. React is all about components. So it is made up of building blocks of components. You can imagine components as small boxes and every functionality in React is separated and placed in such boxes. And in every individual boxes have certain unique functionality which is unique to that box. Whenever that functionality is required, that particular box is picked up and used. Now let us look into a real-time example. We already know that Airbnb uses React extensively on their web pages. And this is the home page of Airbnb. When you look into this home page, you can see multiple components that are displayed in this home page. For example, you can take a closer look at this component. Now, the places to stay is a parent component and you have a location component and you have check-in and check-out component and then you have the guest component. Now you will get the idea of how these little components are packaged under one parent component places to stay and how these components function under the major component of Airbnb React app. So this is how React uses components as they are building block. Let us take a basic example of a shopping cart. We will be using this concept throughout our tutorial. In our shopping cart app, we have our basic components like product components, which are gardening essentials, ebooks, electronics, and we have the basic my cart purchase and my orders components. Each and every component in React has certain kind of structures. Now let us see how the structure inside the components look. To define a component, you can either use a simple JavaScript function like this one on the top, or you can use an ECMAScript, which is the sixth version, and use the class type representation for your component. So in the function, it is similar to the basic JavaScript function, which you have function and a function name. You have a props for passing the variables. And then you have a written statement. Here, it is returning my HTML element. In the class structure, class, de class like definition, we have a class. We have a class name, which extends the react.component class. And then we have a render method. Inside that, we have the similar return statement returning my HTML element. In both the implementations, we have the similar kind of usage. We have DS Shopping Cart as element name and we are passing the name as the props. Now, in these two implementations, we are returning only a single HTML element. Suppose if we would like to return a nested element, then we can nest these nest the desired HTML elements inside a div element. So together as a div element, single unified div element will be returned from our component. So far, we have seen the structure of the components present in React. But these are neither completely JavaScript nor completely a C-sharp kind of a class elements. These are a mixture of XML, HTML kind of syntax. 
So this XML or HTML like syntax is called JSX, which is JavaScript extension. So this is the syntax extension to JavaScript. And JSX extends ECMAScript in React to have a combination of XML or HTML plus JavaScript code. So that's the combination that we have in our React. So ultimately, instead of the old school technique of embedding JavaScript on HTML page, we will put HTML components into JavaScript logic using JS. So this is how the React components are rendered. DS shopping cart is a component and we are calling this component and passing the props over here. And this component returned us HTML element, which is stored in the constant element. Using react dom dot render function, we are going to render this element, which is returned from the component onto the root element of the page. This is the React app that I've already created using the name, with the name DS Shopping Cart using create React app command. And on the right hand side, you can see the result of this React app. Now, we will be exploring more into components by creating them onto our application and checking out the result on our window. Okay. So as I told you before, this is the root function that we have, which is the app root component. And in the root component, we have a written statement. And in the written statement, we have a div element, the root div element, which comprises of a couple of child elements. And this, these uh, elements are rendered inside our index.js. Okay, now we have app.js. I'm going to delete the logo. I'm going to delete the paragraph. I'm going to add welcome to DS Tech Mirror. Yes. Now let me remove certain elements. Okay. Now, like I told you in the presentation, we have child components like products component, my cart, and orders. So for that, let me add add components under source folder. So for adding the components, I would like to have the collection of components under a folder. I'm going to create a new folder and name it as components. And inside the components, I'm going to create a new file and name it as products.js. All my component files will have an extension of .js because they are ultimately JSX files. JSX is nothing but the extension of JavaScript. So ultimately, it is a .js file. And inside the component, I have to import React from React. So this React, which is present over here, it is coming from my node modules. Okay. So here... Using the ES6 class implementation of the components, I'm going to create class, class name, extends, react.component. In order to use this react.component and other react related functions, we have to import this react package from our node modules. So inside our class, we will be having a render method. And inside the render method, we will have the return statement. And the return statement will be an HTML element. 
we have created this component but right now this component cannot be used in other components because they are not they will not be accessible from other components so we have to export this component in order to use it from other files in the application either you can use the export command similar to the app.js and with this command export default and the component name export default and component name products or you can use it directly over here okay but i would like to show you what will happen if i don't use this let me save this go back to app.js and i would like to have products i don't have products component that is coming under the interlists so let us try to add export command export default save it try to access it from here we have to import it over here products from components and products and then let us add it over here we have this component over here now we saw the creation of components let me create this particular piece of welcome command also into a component so i'll create a welcome component under the same components welcome dot js so in this welcome i have to import react from react and add a class welcome extends react dot component and we have a render method and we have a return state then we will export the class so these these are the default steps that you have to memorize in your mind this is the basic skeletal structure of a component okay the ultimate aim of creating this welcome component is that i do not want to include the welcome message here my other components also will have a welcome message so what i'm going to do I'm going to create this functionality into a component which I've already done. So I'm going to include, erase this particular part. I will paste it over here. And in app.js, what I will do, I will call welcome. As a rule of thumb, import your components first and then include it. So let me add import statement for this welcome component that we have components and welcome let me save it you likely forgot to export the component from the file defined in okay here it is react Now you can see in JS, all my HTML elements having small letters, but my components are 
having the starting letter as a capital letter. So this is to differentiate between the components and the HTML default elements that we have. Okay, let me in, uh, let me have another uh, few components also added. I have products. I will have my cart dot js and let me have another like orders dot js okay and same thing which i have done in this product dot js i'll be doing it in the order dot js i just copy paste it and change the name my cart orders Okay. Let me go back to app component. Here let me add let me import first. I'm gonna import orders. And my cart. Okay, and here under the header, I'll be having only my welcome command and under another header, I'll be having my products. And my cart and orders. Okay, let me save it. Right now, we don't, we will not have any changes from the results that we got because all my other components return empty div elements. So let us add some, let us add some content over here. Welcome to products section. Now you can see welcome to the product section. It is being displayed over here. So let me go back. To my app.js and uh, I have two different headers I'll make it as one header so removing this make it one header so that you can able to see it under here yes we got it to make it more clearer let me add some CSS this was the app link CSS okay and I'm gonna go here and inside I'll create another div over here and add a class equal to app link. I'm re reusing the CSS uh, stylings which is already present. And this was my products. I've lost these when I did some undoing operation. Okay. Okay, let me do the same thing for the other uh, components. Let us, then we will know the difference in orders. And my cart. Okay, my cart is coming twice. I think we have have to delete this one. Yes. Yep, we have three components, and these three components are displaying some kind of HTML element, 
and that is returned and using DOM, you, it is being displayed. Okay. And now we will make it more dynamic. This welcome message is present inside all my components. I'm going to include a welcome. I'm going to call the welcome component from my other components. Welcome. And I'm going to pass on some props so that my welcome component will understand from the props that it is coming from so-and-so component. And it will display the appropriate welcome message. I'm going to pass products. Similarly, from orders component, okay, here I have to import welcome. Okay. So, uh, the welcome welcome component was called in all of my components. And the products props were, was also passed, but we are not handling it in the welcome component. Let's go and handle it. Here, in the render method, instead of DS shopping cart, what I'm going to do, I'm going to have curly braces. And here, I'm going to include props. Yes, welcome to products, welcome to my cart, and welcome to orders. So for all the other components, it is working correctly, but not for my shopping cart. For that, let us handle. Generally, by default, we will not include any of the JavaScript logic inside the render method. We are going to make it simple. That is the best practice that we have in React. We are going to keep the render method simple and only return the HTML elements. All the logic will be coming inside inside the class, either as a function, simple function, not the component function that we are talking about. It is a simple JavaScript function. Or we can have constructors also. Let me show you how the constructor behaves. So we can have a constructor inside a class. And in this constructor, as a rule of thumb, we have to call super. Because it is extending React component under every constructor that is present in the class, we have to call the super constructor. And then you can initialize variables like this dot and let me set as a default message equal to and that was my ds. Okay. okay, now I have to include the logic like when should I display DS shopping cart and when should I display the other products. Now let us go and check out this app.js. Using a simple logic, suppose if I don't pass on any props, then it should take the default message. If I pass the props, like in the products function that we have, like we pass the properties, then it should display the appropriate message. So let us go to the welcome component and let us include this particular functionality using a simple function. This display message. Display message. This is my simple function. 
and in the simple function i'm going to access i'm going to check if the props uh, if the props are passed or not this dot props dot name equal to null so if this props dot name is null then i'm going to return this dot default message default message else i'm going to return this dot props dot name the the prop the property that was passed so here and inside the curly braces we are going to call this function display message like you can see this is the html element that we have but here we have the javascript functionality the call, the message calling the function calling that we have added so as a rule of thumb again inside any curly braces whatever functionality is presented inside the curly braces it will be considered as the pure function pure javascript functionality okay now let me save it yes we got the expected answer welcome to ds shopping cart now what has happened over here so in my app component initially we have a root element inside that we have a welcome element so when my welcome component is called and it is not having any properties so it goes to the constructor first and it sets all the default uh, message over here and then under the render welcome to and on is typed and when it confronts this curly braces it executes this functionality it calls the message display message and inside the message it checks for the property name there are no properties so it is null and hence we have this default message is uh, that is written returned as an element so this element is captured in my app.js component and it is displayed similarly in the products component in each of the other components we are passing the messages the products we are passing the properties and these properties are displayed for me and we have also seen about props props are nothing but those values that are passed onto the subclasses or the functions that in turn is used in our html elements react imposes only one rule on props all react components must act like pure functions with respect to their props so what is pure functions pure functions are nothing but those functions which have their properties or props which are very pure not mutated or altered so that is called as pure functions so what react means to say is that we should not alter the value or the state of our prop which is passed on to subclasses or functions that's all for this video guys we have covered both react components and props if you like the content that i'm sharing please like share and subscribe to our channel please don't forget to hit the bell icon to receive the notifications of the upcoming videos also Feel free to contact us through mail, Facebook and Twitter. So till then, much love, keep learning.